going to sing with me. He my prayer, God. I turn to my cry. He my prayer, God. If you have a prayer, you sing with me. What turn to my cry. Hear my prayer, O oh God. Hear my prayer, God. What turn to my cry. From the end of the earth. Oh, what from the end of the earth, Ooh. I turn to my cry. I call to you against the enemies. I turn to my cry. I go to you against the enemies. I take to my cry. When my heart is faint, I take to my cry. When my heart When my heart is faint, when, when my heart is faint, oh, I turn to my cry. Me. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for hearing our voice, for hearing our cry. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for hearing, Lord God, everything that is inside of us that we are screaming and crying unto you. Your word is true. Your word remains true. And you tell us that you hear us the cry of your children and that you will make yourself found in the day of trouble and Lord God that you will provide help in time of need this is the time of need provide help provide help I pray thee provide help 
I pray thee, this is the time of need. Provide us with help, O Lord God. For we have come unto you to receive from thee, to receive from your throne, to receive justice, to receive deliverance, to receive comfort, to receive increase, to receive healing, to receive understanding, to receive wisdom, to receive prosperity, to receive your word. So hear our cry. Listen to our prayer. Fulfill it speedily. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Make your word and your name be true even now in our lives. Let it be manifested. Let it be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be manifested, Christ. For you have come to seek and to save. You have come to redeem. You have come to die so we die not. You have come to be a curse so we be not a curse. You have come to take on yourself the reproach that was ours. And Lord God, by your name and by your word, let your will be done. Let your will be done even in our lives, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Tell to your neighbor, shout. Shout. But you're not shouting. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word of today that the Lord has given unto us is shout for joy break forth. Hallelujah. Shout for joy and break forth. Now let me tell you something. Joshua received from God that he had to shout. And when he shouted, he broke forth. Hallelujah. There was a wall preventing them to break forth. But when they shouted, they were able to break forth. The reason why they were able to break forth was because they shouted the joy of their victory. Hallelujah. You see, they did not break forth before to shout. Mm -hmm. Amen. They shouted and they broke forth because they were convinced that the victory was already given and won. So tell to your neighbor, shout for joy. Shout for joy. I, I can't hear you. You, 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 might, you might need an amplifier in your, in your throat. Shout for joy. Now, close your eyes and see what will make you joyful. Ah, what will make you joyful? You grab it and you shout because you had it. So, hallelujah. You look what's going to make you joyful. You grab it and you shout when you have grabbed it. If you haven't grabbed it, don't shout. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
The word of God says, shout for joy and break forth. Now, I told God, what will make me joyful is prosperity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Remember last time? I told you, do not, do not fake with God. You need house, and you say, Lord God, all I need is your word. <laughs> but in your heart, is not your word that you need. Amen. It will not give to you because you are not telling the truth. Amen. Shout for joy. Hey, I see. Okay, when I say my first million dollar, it means it's the only beginning. Hallelujah. The first million dollar that is coming is before the end of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I grab it. I put it, I take it, I bring it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, let the million dollar now knock at my door, knock at my window, knock at my bank, knock at my pocket in the name of Jesus Christ. Katerere braso katakata. Hallelujah. For he said, shout for joy and break forth. Hallelujah. Give me the word of God on the screen, please. Isaiah chapter 54. We're going to read verse 1. Isaiah 54, starting from verse 1. Uh -huh. Sing, O oh, barren. Sing, O oh, barren. Now let me put it in context before we continue. The Lord is speaking to the land of Jerusalem, the land of Judah, the land of Israel. Notice, there were a desertic land. Hallelujah. They were a desertic land, but he told them, I'm going to put you in a place and a position that will give you the ability to receive and to prosper. Continue, read for me. Sing, O barren, mm -hmm. thou that didst not bear, mm -hmm. break forth into singing. Break forth into singing, continue. And cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tents, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, light, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Verse 4, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Verse 5, for thy makers is thine, is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, said thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Verse 8. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is the waters of Noah unto me, 
For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be froth with thee, wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Verse 11. O oh, thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not com comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. Verse 12. And I will make thy windows of a gate, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Verse 13, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Verse 14, in righteousness shall thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall, fall for thy sake. thy sake. Continue. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an, in an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy Verse 17, no weapon that mm. is formed against thee shall mm. prosper, mm -hmm. and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment mm. thou shalt condemn. Mm -hmm. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, mm. and, thy, and, and their, their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the, the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 Shout for joy, break forth. I'm going to go back in verse 1. You will notice before you enter in chapter 54, you have a sacrifice that is made for you. Because Isaiah 53 talks about the sacrifice of Christ who was laid as a sheep. Hallelujah. Who was slothful. He talks about how he took the chastisement that was due unto us upon him. He talks about how the curse that was for us, he took it. And Isaiah 54, he brings this one. So, literally, the word of God tells us that when you have given your life to Christ, that you have entered into covenant with Christ. You literally receive mercy greatly. He says, even though I was rough with you for a while, I will be merciful greatly to you. And the same way I have sworn that I will not cause the Noah, the, 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 the flood in the time of Noah, the same way I'm swearing to you, I will not abandon you. See, he says, the same way I have stole more Noah, because you have entered my covenant. Hallelujah. Now notice something. He said, because you have entered a covenant. If Noah has entered the covenant, if I enter the ark, and it's raining, and it gets out of the ark, what happened? He will just drown. Is what I'm saying. As long as you remain in the covenant, you are under protection. Because it says that, mm, Lord Jesus, as long as you remain faithful to me, it says I will make sure that your stones, which stone? Give me the back that verse. Those, uh, 
Yeah, give me this. Ho, oh, mm -hmm. thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, mm -hmm. and not comforted. Uh -huh. Behold, I will lay thy stone. He said, Ho, oh, thou afflicted, tossed with tempest. Give me that in the amplifier. Uh -huh. Oh, you afflicted mm -hmm. city, storm toast, mm -hmm. and not comforted. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. I will set your precious stones in mortar mm -hmm. and lay your foundation with sapphire. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, remember, I said earlier that the word of God is talking about Jerusalem, about the city of Jerusalem, about the land of Israel. Hallelujah. But who is Israel? A child of God. Let me explain this again. The name of the nation was called after the name of the one who had covenant with God. So even though it talks about a city, he's not talking to the stone He's talking to the human living in that city. Does it make sense? So when God says, whole oh, city, he's not talking about the ground. He's talking about those who compose the city. So he says, who oh, are you afflicted? Who is afflicted? Is the people in the city. They had a possession. They had their houses. They had their uh, uh, belongings. And the enemy came and put fire and destroyed their houses. And they have made all kinds of a desolation and caused the people to have everything lost. Amen. So the city is also you. However the enemy has come, the word of God says that you were afflicted in a way and you were Storm tossed. Things has happened in your life. Left, right, up, down. You thought that if you run ahead, you will be in a kind of protection. If you go back, you will be protected. If you go on the right, things will be better. If you go on the left, it might change. When you finish, it is like pop, pop. The Bible says you are storm tossed. Today you laugh, tomorrow you cry. Today you laugh, tomorrow you cry. Today you laugh, tomorrow you cry. Storm tossed. And he said you were not comforted. The comfort that God wanted you to receive. You did not receive it. And as you cry unto God, hear my prayer, oh God, attend to my cry. He said, listen carefully. Hallelujah. He said, I will set your precious stones. Now he says this. Before, whatever you had, it was built with just regular brick and regular stone. And the enemy thought that it would destroy what you had in order to shame you. But it did not understand that God has ordered precious stone and needed somebody to replace and to build and rebuild. Let me explain. If you have a house and you call somebody to do what they call remodel, hallelujah, the house will be remodel, has to be broken. You know what I'm saying? To change the portion that you need to change. But let me tell you something. When they break the portion that they need to break, that portion they broke, they need to trash it. This, you cost money. We cost you money. It's not free. There is the breakdown that you pay for, and there is the build up that you pay for. So God says, instead of making you 
pay for the breakdown, I will let the enemy do the work for free. Uh, do you understand that? L let me explain again. In a normal way, if you need to remodel, you will have to pay for the cost of the breakdown. And you will also pay for the cost of the build-up. The things that we take to trash, you have to pay for it. But the enemy came. And he thought by tossing you left and right, by attacking you, it will only make you not to advance and not to break forth. You know what I'm saying? The intent of the enemy was to cause you to be stagnant and finish. And God says, the reason why I allow the enemy is just uh, to give you an opportunity and uh, to give to the enemy to do your work for free. <laughs> uh, let me explain you something. The Bible says that it pleases God to trouble those who trouble you. Eh? So instead of worrying and wondering, what's going to happen? What will I do? What will I do? God says, the person who comes to trouble you, that person is helping you. Why? Because that person, he is ending his own self. So you don't have to worry about going after the person because when the person rises, he himself position himself against the will of God in your life. So God himself takes care of that person. For he says, they shall gather against thee, but they shall fall for thy... Let me read it again. Hallelujah. The word of God says, with that, that verse. Verse 15. He said, behold, they shall surely gather together. Amen. Behold, they shall surely gather together. Lord Jesus, help us. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. God did not send them to trouble you. God did not appoint them, did not will you to be troubled. Because you have entered covenant and exchanged your sins for his righteousness. For he says... Your righteousness is of me. Then he says this. But regardless, they will still gather. But whosoever. Somebody say whosoever. The Bible says whosoever. Whether it is even your dog. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If it is your gut, <laughs> when he jumps and tries to, he will fall in fire. <laughs> Whosoever. You are wondering why they are accusing you, but God says they ought to do so. So you can see his salvation. Because if the enemy does not rise, how do you know your God is strong? Uh, tell me, how? How would you know that your God is strong if the enemy does nothing, never? So God says, verse 15. He says, indeed, behold... They shall surely gather together. But it's not from me. It's not by me, saith the Lord. 
And then he goes by saying, whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Now notice, he does not say that we fall for his sake, Lord. No, for your sake. Amen. That we not fall simply because of the sake of the Lord. But because God has covenanted with you, he says they will fall because of you. So what it means is that as you are entering places, as you are walking to places, as you are possessing things, as you are possessing your domains, your territory, your promises, whatever you at, when they come against you, because you are in that place, they must fall. If you are not there, nothing will happen to them. But the Bible says, for thy sake, they shall fall. And he goes further. He says, verse 15, uh, verse 16. He said, behold, I have created a smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument of his work. What he means is that God is the one who made the one who makes the knife. The one who makes the knife thinks that because he made a knife, he is stronger to destroy you. But God says, because he is the one who made the knife and made the instruments and made the matter for the knife to be made, he will cause that guy when he has finished from his weapon, he takes the weapon and his own hand, the weapon falls. Are you what I'm saying? When if, let me explain this. He finished to form, let's say, a, 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 a um, those things that with the boom, I would call it. Okay, a spear or a arrow. And he finished, he pulled the arrow. He has finished to form the weapon. But notice the Bible says, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. So he finished to form the weapon. Now he is pulling the, um, yeah, hallelujah. And as he is pulling, and he released that weapon, Fall right before him. Let me repeat again. In the normal way, when they form the weapon on the bow, and they have the string, and they pull, when they release, the weapon goes straight. But for thy sake, when they pull the bow, the string breaks. They go and they put another string. When they pull and they release, what happened? It breaks. And they think they probably did it wrong. So they go, they find another string again. But this time they put two, three strings to make it stronger. And when they pull, the boy itself breaks. So they are forming the weapon, but it will not prosper. And God said the reason for is because he is the one who formed the one who formed the weapon. So he will give to that guy foolishness. You know what I'm saying? He will give to that guy foolishness. He will do all his weapon in a foolish way. When he has finished forming the weapon, that weapon falls. And he thinketh that there is something wrong about how he did it. But he does not understand that the one who created him has sealed his mind, sealed his wisdom, sealed his understanding. So he's doing his doing. When he's finished, he breaks. Now 
since the weapon does not form and uh, does not prosper, notice what he does. He rises against with judgment. He has used the weapon. The weapon did not prosper. Now he used his words. For the Bible says, verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. But every tongue, hallelujah, that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. The guy took, he went to see a witch. The witch told him, ah, the way I cast spell on people is this way, this way, this way. And then he said to the witch, but what should I do to make that person fall? The witch said, okay, bring me a picture. You bring the picture. The witch look at the picture. And suddenly the picture smiled to the witch. And the witch is like, hey. <laughs> you, you, you don't know God. Let me explain you how it works. They send Balaam. They say, Balaam, please come curse and cast spell on the children of Israel. They went to Balaam. This is the money. Can you just cast spell? Can you just curse them? Balaam looked at the children of Israel. And he tell to the guy who sent, uh, uh, to the guy who came to him to cast spell. He said, listen, even if I cast spell, it will fall on you. <laughs> he said, even if I do, that spell will not work because they are blessed. They are protected. And then he says, instead of looking at them with evil eye, he looked at them with favor. Let me explain to you. A lady may rise to steal your husband. And they go in the, uh, I would call it, in the hotel. They arrive there, and she has formed every weapon like to the husband. The husband has believed the word, and the husband has gone with her. Now they sit down. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. Honey, honey, honey. Now the lady in that hotel, suddenly she rise and she say, are you not ashamed you left your wife for me? And the husband is like, oh, Sherry, Sherry, oh, don't mind, don't mind. And there, she takes the phone of the wife. Hello, madam, your husband is here. <laughs> you don't know God. You just do not know God. The Bible says that there will form the weapon. It won't work. And when they rise for thy sake, they will fall. They conspire to take your children away. They conspire to break your marriage. They conspire to make you poor. So they sit down and they say, so these people, we must make everything so they will become sick. They will become poor. They will become in complete demand and lack. And God said they have gathered together. And when they finish to gather together, the same thing that they have attempted to do to you, the Lord God says it falls flat. For thy sake. Give me verse 7.
verse 7, Isaiah 54. For a brief moment I abandoned you. Hallelujah. Amen. For a very brief and small moment, he has abandoned you. Meaning, for a very small moment, he has left you without his actions. And you have the impression that it was over. But you see, he did what he did to Pharaoh. When he told to the children of Israel to go, for a brief moment, he brought them right into a uh, uh, um, dead hand. Hallelujah. And they felt like it was over. They felt like this one, there is no more hope, there is no more breakthrough. And God says, my strategy is to bait your adversaries. My strategy is to bait your enemies. Because I do not want you to have blood in your hands. But I am holy. I can take anything I want to take because I created it. So he says, all you have to do is to obey me. And as you obey me, stretch your hand. He tells to Moses, stretch your hand and your road. Hallelujah. Stretch your hand and your road over the sea. And divide it. But it does not stop there. He said, after you divide it, you walk in that sea, dry ground. He makes a sea suddenly and the mud that was in that sea to dry just because of your sake. So people are rising, conspiring, and when they finish, they are dry. And now God says, after you have passed, and now you have passed over, stretch against your hand. Hallelujah. Because this is what happened. The enemy were running after Israel with all the, the, the chariots. So God purposely made them come close. You know what I'm saying? He made them come close. There were many. They were so close that the children of Israel say, hey, now they have overtaken us. But you see, if you want to do a good bait for miles, the miles must need to come close to the bait. If the miles look at your bait from far, that bait will do nothing. <laughs> you need to come close to the bait and smell it. And then when he smell it, he knows we bring him in the bait. <laughs> he thinks that he got your stuff, but he does not know your stuff got him. He thinks he got you, but he does not know and did not know that God made him to fall in the trap he has dug for you. So they enter into the sea, and God said, now stretch your hand and close the sea. And they see now, swallow them. So for a brief moment, he abandoned you. He did like he did not hear you. For a brief moment, he just wanted those who were against you to just rise. You see, the most of the time that you are in a battle, you will realize that those who were your worst enemy were those who were closer to you. Hallelujah. That's why Judah was so close to Jesus Christ. And now the Lord says that for a brief moment he abandoned you, but with what? With great compassion and, and mercy. I will gather you to myself again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will gather you. You, yourself, and the things that belongs to you and the people that are in your life. He will gather you. He will cause yours and you to now come to him and believe him even stronger. He will gather you to himself. 
Verse 8. Verse 8. In an, in an outburst of wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. Mm. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you. Say, 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 say the Lord, your Redeemer. Your Redeemer. Something that is redeemed, something that was set for destruction, set to perish. Isaac was set for destruction. He was set to perish. And the Lord redeemed him with a lamb. Hallelujah. The same way we were set for destruction. We were set to perish. And the Lord redeemed us with his blood. So therefore, if we are redeemed, when the enemy now calls for us, the only thing he finds is the blood of Christ. For the Bible says, your righteousness is of he, God. Your righteousness is of me, say the Lord. Verse 9. Verse 9. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, as I swore an oath that the waters of Noah will not flood the earth again. In the same way I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor will I rebuke you. Hallelujah. Amen. He has sworn... The same way he has a covenanted with uh, Noah. That no more will I destroy the earth with again the flood. Hallelujah. He said the same way in that uh, sworn, in that uh, word, in that vow, he also makes covenant with you to no more abandon you again. Now the enemy is in trouble. Because the enemy has made everything possible in order to make you frustrated and let go God. But the more the enemy did, the more stronger you grew, you do not even know why. Hallelujah. You see, every time that the enemy has come and pushed against you, it's like a tree that the wind has pushed against and the root has even grounded stronger. Every tree that does not have a profound root is easily taken off by the wind. So when they grow, the wind is participating into their strength. They are tossed, but it is storm tossed, but it is a purpose to just strengthen them, to just strengthen them, to cause them to be stronger, to go out. And the more the storm comes, the more they are rooted. The more the storm comes, the more they go deeper. The more the storm comes, the more they are rooted. And then the more they are rooted, the more the word of God says, uh, the enemy now is falling for your sake. He's 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 falling for your sake. They had a purpose, but that purpose did not work and will not work. And after they have done all they did, and after they have conspired all they wanted to conspire, they are left with one thing. The Bible says now you will condemn them. Hallelujah. What does it mean? The Bible says, I, you I wish. Ananias and Sapphira. When the law, Apostle Paul had the power to say that. Are you what I'm saying? When that, I forgot his name. He was a, a, a detractor of the gospel in the time of Paul. Paul was uh, preaching the word. And then Paul told to the, uh, uh, no, 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 a detractor. Paul was telling, no, Paul, he was telling to the people about Christ. And that man was perverting the ways of the Lord, trying to make the gospel pervert so that the people will not listen. The Bible said, Paul, look at him and say, you, be blind. And the Bible said, 
instantly he became blind and he was looking for somebody to lead him. Hallelujah. Give me the verse. Put it on the screen for me, please. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Acts 13. Go ahead, put on the screen for us. Go ahead. Act 13, verse 1. Now, in the church of Antioch, there were prophets who spoke a new message of God to the people and teachers. Barnabas, Simon, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lysias of Siren, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Verse 2, while they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about, huh? Verse 6, okay, continue, go to verse 6. Verse Ver, 6. No, verse, verse, verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. When Barnabas and Saul arrived at Salamis, mm -hmm. they began to preach the word of God. When they arrived at Salamis, they began to preach the word of God. Proclaiming the message of eternal salvation. Proclaiming the message of eternal salvation. Through faith in Christ. Through faith in Christ. In the synagogues. In the synagogues of the Jews. Jews. And they also... Had John, had John Mark as their assistant. And they also had John Mark as their assistant. Uh -huh. Verse 6. When they had traveled through the entire island of Cyprus. When they had traveled through the entire island of Cyprus. As far as Paphos. As far as Paphos. They found a sorcerer. They found a sorcerer. They found a sorcerer. They found a witch. A witch. Hallelujah. Amen. They were preaching. You see, as you do the work of God, God will cause you to meet people who are contrary to his will. But there is a purpose for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. People who will frustrate the word of God and want to make everything possible to make you believe that your God is not active. Because... The more you pray, the more they mock you. Hallelujah. And they think that they have now gotten you in the hands. But notice what happened. The Bible says he found a witch. A sorcerer. A Jewish false prophet named. So he suddenly went around saying that he was the son of the Lord Jesus. Because bar Jesus means son of Jesus. Hallelujah. Trying to make everything possible to defraud the people. How many bar Jesus we have in the government? There are many. Like they look you in the face and they say we want to help you. While they are conspiring to destroy you. First prophet is nothing else than a liar. Hallelujah. He said, I heard God say, oh. but what he heard was his belly. <laughs> his belly was hungry. And you know, you know, sometimes you can hear your belly, the, the sound. You can be standing with somebody and you don't even know where it comes from. And the sound is loud. It's almost as close as it is among the mountains. <laughs> and your belly suddenly so loud that people like what are, uh, and then you like my belly <laughs> you know like, you see 
You don't claim it is you. You claim it is your belly. As your belly is not you. <laughs> you say, I didn't do anything. It's my belly. <laughs> Amen. So, that sorcerer was a false prophet. He started preaching a gospel that was making him only looked at and not Jesus for the sake of his own. So the more his belly cries, the more he prophesied falsely. But what happened, verse 7? Verse 7, who was closely associ associated with the proconsul? Which means that he made everything possible to get his way among the rich people, among the administration, among the rulers. And now, because of the money, he was able to give them fake prophecy that he received. So he was very closely associated with the proconsul. Hallelujah. Of the province, and the name was Sergius Paulus. Hallelujah. Amen. An intelligent and sensible man. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He called for Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ. So he wanted to hear the word of God. Continue. But Elimas. That is the name that is translated. Uh huh. The sorcerer. So the same guy, Elimas, by Jesus. Go ahead. For that is how his name is translated. Mm -hmm. Oppose them, trying to turn the proconsul away from accepting the faith. Hallelujah. Isn't what they do right now in the government? Hallelujah. Isn't that they do right now in the schools? The Bible called them witches. When you say Jesus, they say, no, no Jesus over here. The Bible said he was opposing them. The word of God says those who oppose the word of God, they are called witches and wizards. Those who oppose the word of God in faith, they are called sorcerers. And many of them are in high places. They sit among decision makers. You go to work. Let me tell you. There are witches and wizards sitting. And say, ah, this one is a Christian. We will make sure that he will suffer the Lord. You don't even know. They sit down. Because in your paperwork, they ask you a question, are you a Christian? You think you give your faith by saying, yes, I am a Christian. But you don't know that they are targeting you and classifying you in order to attack you. Because they have a database in which now they can search and tag a specific word by saying Christian. The Bible, as it was in the Bible, there is a man who's called J. Seclo who brought some charges and evidences where now the government and the FBI have now a list in which they were searching classification of those who are Christians. And one, they found the classification of those who are Christians called conservatives, they now attack them specifically. To the point that they have used money that was also given to terrorism to attack the people who said Christ, who talk about the word of God. To the point that today they attack you because you dare say that uh, in Jesus Christ you can be healed.
But such a man, the Bible says, he was opposing the proconsul to hear and to accept the faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody said to someone, he's asked the person, he says, when you curse using the name of God, what does it do to you? The person did not answer. But the person said, okay, will you be okay to use the name of your mom in curse? The person said, no. And he says, why? He said, because I love her, and then she did so many for me. And he said, but you curse God who made your mom and made you by using his name in vain. Then the person realized, oh, that's bad. But you see, they do so because they have been put in their mind that you can use the name of God in vain without anything happening to you. But God said, when they rise for your sake, they will. So what did Paul? Paul rose against, uh, um, 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 Elimas rose against the word of God. So Paul rose against the sorcerer. He did not simply say, no, 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 listen to me, proconsul. No, no, no. For him to continually speak the word, he needed to rise against the thing that was hindering the word. Does it make sense? Because in the battle, what prevents you to advance has to be down for you to advance. So what happened? Verse 9. Verse 9, and Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and led by him. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit and he was led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. What happened? Looked Steadily at Elimas. Hallelujah. Amen. He looked straight in the face, eye to eye contact. Hallelujah. Amen. He did not do like, in the name of Jesus, mm -mm. look in the face, eye to eye contact. And what happened? And said, you, Elimas, who are full of every kind of deceit. Amen. Amen. He completely described who the person is and what he does. For the word of God says, remember, Isaiah 54, that whosoever arise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the children of the Lord. So you are given the authority to condemn. When they rise in judgment against thee. Because God spoke over you a promise. And they rise to curse that promise. So you can rise to say in the name of Jesus you become mute. You rise in the name of Jesus to blind them. Because the promise of God in your life is to glorify his name. When they do rise against, listen carefully. Paul could have called on him death because he had the power. But he chose another road. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that you have the power of death and life on your tongue. But because of that power you have, you also have responsibility. Amen. So you cannot just, just go around and kill everybody. <laughs> Amen. Because the blood is the blood. However, if somebody is a sorcerer, the New Testament, Amen, Said that Paul prayed directly to that sorcerer. He did not even pray concerning the spirit behind the sorcerer. Are you following? 
Somebody say, Lord, help me understand. Say, Lord, help me understand. There are two types of prayer in warfare. Prayer against the principalities and the spirits and the demons. And fighting against the spirit that is behind the people. That's the first. But you see, the spirit that is behind the people, if you blind that spirit, the people will still be looking and seeing. So what did Paul do? Instead of doing like the lady, you remember that Bible, I said that Bible, that verse where the lady was after them and then uh, speaking, these are the children of God, the prophet, I mean, they bring the word of God and she was filled with a spirit of python. Remember that? What did he do? He cast it out, the spirit. Why he didn't cast out that spirit? In this case here. Hallelujah. Instead of casting out the spirit that is in a lima, a limas, there are degrees. Those who are servants of sorcerer is different than the sorcerer. Let me repeat again. Those who are what we call rulers of darkness, they are different than the servant of the rulers of darkness. So, the, because remember the word of God said that she was a servant of the rulers of darkness. And they were utilizing her for money. So, she was bound by the trick. He delivered her. By those who use the word of God to defraud the people of God. Those who rise against God in order to stop the word of God. They are themselves making themselves sorcerer. You notice, the Lord did not cast out the demon that were in the Pharisee. But he cast out the demon that was in the prostitute. To the Pharisee, he says you will die in your sin. To the prostitute, he says go sin no more. This sorcerer, hallelujah, this sorcerer rose against the plans of God. And then Paul, condemned the spirit and he condemned him to blindness. And what happened? Read for me. No, 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 no. Let, let's go back on verse, verse 9. Let's go back on verse 9. Verse 9. You, you need to understand that context. The Bible says what? Read. But Saul, who was known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit uh -huh. and led by him. Uh, no, 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 no. Who was leading Paul to blind that person? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Because somebody will say, well, you cannot pray this way. You cannot blind it. You cannot blind the person. But the Bible says that the Holy Ghost himself led Paul to pray that way. Hallelujah. So it's not a matter of emotions. It's a matter of righteousness. The word of God said that the Holy Ghost found it right to tell Paul, blind the sorcerer. Now the question is for you. The question is what is leading you? Amen? Because if it is anger that is leading you, then that's where you make your sin. But when the Holy Ghost leads you, Amen? He can condemn anything. So continue. But Saul. But Saul, uh -huh. who also known, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. led by him, looked steadily mm -hmm. at Elimas mm -hmm. and said, You, Elimas, who are full of every kind. So he described him exactly for who he is. And then what? Of deceit and every kind of fraud. And every kind of fraud. Can you imagine that? You put Nigeria. Amen. Cameroon. Ivory Coast. Burkina Faso. Guinea. 
China and America, you put them together, the fraud they do is not more than this guy. The Bible said he was full of every kind of fraud. He has a mastermind to generate fraud. He was so good into fraud that he was able to assign to the proconsul. You are being honest. You can't even see a director. You know what I'm saying? But the liar can access even to the president. Now the day God gave you the opportunity to rise, here is a sorcerer coming saying, no, he does not deserve it. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was a young boy with my mom, you did not know me. Now that God said, I'm going to give you a car, you say, I don't deserve it. Blind. <laughs> When I was young boy with my mom, you did not know me. I told you, told you, told you, told you, sorrow the Lord, sought the Lord. Now the Lord say, I'm going to prosper you. You say, a prosperity is bad, blind. <laughs> the Bible say, no, not the Bible say, I say I am a blessing collector. Hallelujah. Amen. So continue. You son of the devil. Ah, you son of the devil. Sometimes, and, and, and who is speaking over here? Paul, through, uh, I mean, the Holy Spirit through Paul. Paul is qualifying this guy correctly. You see, it did not go around like uh, usually people will do. No, you know, you have to accept the Lord Jesus. The Lord loves you. You cannot tell to a one who's possessed by the devil, not understand. You have to deal with that person at the level the person understands. It's not everyone to whom you say the Lord loves you. Did the Paul, let me, let me, let, let me explain, let, let me help you. Did the Holy Spirit know that Jesus Christ died also for that sorcerer? So why didn't tell him Jesus Christ died for you? Hallelujah. Did the Holy Ghost know that God created that sorcerer? Why he didn't tell him God loves you? It's not everywhere, every time you tell to people God loves you. 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 Like it becomes like a a, a, a perroquet. Part of. No, God love you so much. Wow. There is a lady. She's a. Uh, she's supposed to be a comedian. Last year, she decided to take. That's a uh, poison they put in the body. And then she was mocking Jesus Christ as she was taking it. And right on stage before everybody, she fell boom and cracked a skull. Before everybody. Another one rose against the children of God. Cursed them. When he feels to curse them, right there he fell and died. That was how many days ago? Four or five days ago. Are you telling me that a God also cannot tell? He can tell them God loves you. There are certain cases where you will have to say that, but you have to be, lead by, uh, 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 be led by the Holy Spirit. But what the Holy Spirit does and says, which is the word of God, it says, every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. So, what is leading you to condemn is the word of God that is the Holy Spirit. 
It is the word of God that is leading you to condemn the wrong that rise against you in judgment. Read for me. You son of the devil, enemy of everything that is right and good. Enemy of everything that is right, right and, and good. good. God says one man, one woman. They say no. One man, one man. God say family, children. They say no. Abortion, abortion. God say gather together. They say no. Stay from people. God say, lift up the name of Christ. They say, no, be quiet. God say, lay hand of people. They say, don't touch people. Are you following? Enemy of everything that is right and good. Will you what? Will you never stop? Perverting the straight path of the Lord? Will you never stop perverting the straight path of the Lord? There are people in this country. It was last year. The vice president of the United States of America stood and said that the Lord Jesus himself value abortion and she went in churches and the pastor of those churches received her to preach why ladies should have abortion and there were pastors in the United States of America who made prayer night for people to have the right to abort <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, you have difficulty to pray in the night, but they pray in the night so evil will rise and they are called Christians. No wonder the atheist is atheist. No wonder the Islamic is confused. No wonder the Jehovah Witness does not even believe Jesus like Christ is true. No wonder the Mormon has another Bible. Because confusion has become now the theory and the theology of people. That's what the word of God said. The Bible says that he perverts the straight ways, the straight path of the Lord. In the Congress... Last year, no, not last year, two years ago, I believe, two or three years, there was a, a ordained pastor from the Presbyterian Church at the 117, I believe, 217 something, opening of the Congress. He stood in the Congress and he finished, he prayed, and when he finished praying, he said, In the God. That is, no, he said, in the, in the name of the one that has, that is called Brahma. A pastor ordained by the Presbyterian church. He stood in the Congress opening. And he said, in the name of the one that is called Brahma. That different religion calls differently. Amen, a woman. <laughs> because they told him that to say amen, it is discrimination against a woman. Do you understand that? <laughs> you still are not understanding. <laughs> they say, when you say amen, it means to discriminate against women. They lost their mind. So now, they told him, if you say amen, you got to say a woman. 
And then he went. He prayed in the name of Brahma. And when he finished, he said, Amen, a woman. I, I thought I was dreaming. I thought I was dreaming. The Bible said they are never stopping perverting the straight path of the Lord. But the word of God says, those who rise and gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. To shout for joy is because you know that Christ has redeemed you from the curse. The curse did not depart. It just fell on somebody else. <laughs> the world is already cursed. So those who decide not to follow Christ, the word of God says they are already under the wrath of God. So if they are under the wrath of God, just as Elimas was under the wrath of God, you a child of God, do you, you have received from the Lord to condemn every tongue that rises against thee in judgment. Hallelujah. You are provided that strength by the Spirit of God. Not for doing yourself judgment. I would call it. Uh, not for using it for your own pride or your own vanity. Hallelujah. But for the righteousness of God. Give me, I believe, Second Thessalonian. For it pleases God to trouble those who troubles you. Hallelujah. By the Spirit of God, you are led to seek to do the will of God. And the Lord is seeking to rise you in order for you to spread the gospel. But there are people who want to frustrate your life, frustrate the plans of God. Some of them, you are being given the authority to speak against them, against their ways, against their activities, against their thought, against their practice in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse six. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse six. For after all, for after all, all it is only just for it God is only just for God to repay with distress those who distress to you. repay with distress those who distress you. Give me that in the uh, King James. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, King mm -hmm. James Version. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that troubles you. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe that? Now let me explain to you. God said it is righteous. For him. To recompense. Trouble. To those. Who trouble you. It might not be righteous for you. To desire them. To die. Hallelujah. But for God. Because remember. When God takes the life of someone, it is righteous. Because he did what? Created them. When you take the life of someone, it is not righteous because you did not create the person. However, you have received power to blind and condemn those who rise against thee in judgment just as Paul did. 
led by the Holy Spirit. Paul was not frustrated because the guy was doing that. No. Paul was indignated, what we call the holy indignation. Hallelujah. Because if you are angry at a person, you say, be blind, you ain't going to be blind. <laughs> he will look at you very good. <laughs> Open his eyes and say, okay, is that all you have? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It is a spirit that tells you deal with that person because he has pos positioned himself as a ruler of darkness, a witch, a sorcerer, a wizard. But it is God who says, I see it righteous to recompense trouble, tribulation to those who trouble you. But here's the thing. How many times that God will recompense them trouble? Seven times. The word of God says, if somebody is stole, how many times he has to pay? They got trouble you for one day. He's going to be troubled seven times. You have to believe. Why you have to believe? Because it makes you at peace. That those who know what they do, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know who you have. Are you know what I'm saying? Since you know that God will take the or has taken your matter in his hand, that shall give you peace. Because you know that your God already said, this case, don't worry. I will deal with them. By the time I'm finished, they will run to come to bless you. Talk about who? Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh, all I want to do is to discuss with you. Let my people go. Pharaoh said, if you are God, touch them. God says, let my people go. He said, while we are listening to you, myself, I am God. Pharaoh, I say, let my people, God, I go. Okay, okay, okay. You can go. You all go nowhere. Sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no, no. Today, you go to your boss. You say, ah, I need permission to have uh, my uh, Wednesday off, Friday off, because I'm going to church. Your boss will tell you you are mad. Am I right? He said, let my people go so they can worship me. But if you tell your boss, I want Wednesday and Friday, to go to party, your God will say, sign. If you go, you tell them, oh, we have a trip vacation in the Bahamas. Oh, okay, good trip. When are you coming back? You say, I know. I, I have a, a mountain prayer for the Lord Jesus. Sit down. <laughs> Am I right? Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, tell your God, he has to send me a letter. <laughs> Am I right? But by the time God finished with Pharaoh, Pharaoh was so confused that not only he let them go, but he gave them money to go with that. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will rise against thee. And for your sake, 
there will fall. Now, here's my question for you. Why are you distressed? Why are you worried? Why are you confused? The Lord does not want you to compromise your faith. No. He wants you to stay firm. He wants you to stay strong. Because he wants to cause you to shout for joy. You shout for joy when you see that God has delivered you. But if everything goes like there is no opposition, you might be in the camp of the devil. <laughs> Amen? Because the devil does not bother his own. He already have them. Can you kill a dead man? You see, the Philistine that took the body of uh, King Saul and they cut his head. Did he, did he do any harm? <laughs> Hallelujah. But here's the thing. The Bible says you are supposed to be dead to yourself. Hallelujah. You are supposed to die to yourself. You are so what it means is that when you die to yourself and you live in Christ and for Christ, when they do what they do, you know it does not concern you. Because you are dead. <laughs> you are no longer living for them. You're living for Christ. So when they gather against thee to say, ah, we're going to trouble this person. Ah, we're going to fire this person. Ah, we're going to demote this person. Ah, we're going to remove the children. Ah, we're going to remove the business. Ah, we're going to fire. When they finish, the Bible says God himself, it is a good thing for him to trouble those who troubled you. But for it to happen, you have to trust that you are dead to this world and that you are alive in Christ for Christ. You must trust it. That because it is Christ, the four, that I serve, as long as he has not said the last word, they cannot kill me. Uh, hallelujah. They will do all they do until Christ said no. They will not sack seed for no weapon that is formed against thee shall never prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against thee Thou shalt condemn, for this is the heritage of the children of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake up your neighbor. Tell him to stop sleeping. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, you like uh, my brothers in Africa. They're in church and they sleep. And then Pastor Martin said, you touch them. And it's like, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Shout. For joy, break forth every opposition. Tell to yourself, every opposition, every walls, every dimension 
of the enemy, of the rulers of darkness, that are gathering together against me, they shall all fall for my sake. Every sorcerer, every witches, every wizard that are perverting the ways of God in my life, I blend you. I blend you. I blend you in the name of Jesus Christ. For see, it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to those who trouble you. Trust that word and be at peace. Trust that word and be calm. For he says in the book of Exodus 14, 14. He says this. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians that you are seeing today, you shall see them no more. Every Egyptian for your against your finances. Every Egyptian against your health. Every Egyptian. Now let me tell you what the Egyptian is. Is they exploit you for the benefit. You feel what I'm saying? They cause you to work for the benefit. And they exploit you. In the world of health, they call it insurance. They can make you sick and now run as if they want to save you. But the word of God says, the Egyptians that you see today, that are rising against your promotion, that are rising against your advancement, that are rising against your break forth. You shall see them. Did he say again? And now, themselves and their chariots were all drowned. Nothing was left. They were troubling the children of God. So it pleased God to trouble them. But before God troubled them, he made them to pay the children of Israel. Are you following what I'm saying? The Lord will not take your enemy out. He will cause you, he will cause you to see a table dressed in the presence of your enemy. He will cause you to see your enemy to pay your taxes, to pay for your feast, and he can take him. They are indeed enemies of the gospel. They are indeed sorcerers like Elimas. And they are many. And they are sitting in courts. They are sitting in judicial system. They are sitting in countries. The proconsul was a guy with more power to judge the people. They are sitting in the hearing of administration. They are sitting in the hearing of decision makers. 
Somebody wants to do good to you. And they come, they say, no, I don't think the person deserves it. Why? Well, you must know they are extremists. Wow, they are Christians. Wow. Well, don't you know that the, the Christian, they say that the, those who don't believe in the Lord Jesus will go to hell. And then they say, how can a loving God will do this? Because they are extremists. And they go around, they say the same thing. When they attack the Lord Jesus, they say, but if truly he was a God, why there is evil? They go around, they say this. If truly he created us, why this all evil? Hallelujah. It is the recompense of the tribulation and the trouble that you have brought in the children of God. For when you trouble the child of God, as they did, they trouble the children of God, they trouble the disciple, they trouble the believers, they trouble those who follow Christ. So God is recompensing them with trouble. For it says, the sin of the father will fall to the fourth generation, which is 400 years. Hallelujah. But the question is, do you believe that indeed God we take your case in his hand. They may have stressed you to the point that you don't even see the out, the, how we say that? The way out anymore. When you look, you, 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 you don't know how this is going to work. You might tell yourself, well, uh, at this point, I just give it up. Let the will of God be done. But that's not faith. That's discouragement. You see what I'm saying? God has not answered your discouragement. Hallelujah. He answered your faith. It is rather, Lord, I know that this case, you are handling it. I give it in your hand. It's not, Lord, I don't know what to do. Just take it. Uh -uh. He answered faith, not disappointment. Hallelujah. Say, my God answers my faith, not my disappointment. Because disappointment is a result of doubt. Not seeing something changing. Will this change again? Will this even work again? Every elimas that has come to pervert the ways of God in your life, the word of God says that he has ways for you to give you peace. He has ways for you to prosper you. He has ways for you to give you a future. But Elimas and the spirit of Elimas has come and caused those who are leading the perverted ways against the will of God in your life. He says, today, be blind. The word of God said that Paul was led by the Holy Spirit. And it was a good will and a perfect will to silence every contrary voice that was rising against the purposes of God. He said the plans and the ways and the path of God for my life was not to die, 
was not to be sick, was not to stay behind. For he said, his path I will be at the head and not at the tail. He says, his path I will not borrow, but I will. But the Elimas, they say, you see, come, borrow, come, borrow. And after they give unto you, they call you every day. Where is my money? Where is my money? Where is my money? And when you don't tell, when you don't give, they say everything you have, we sell it. So we make you broke. Elimas. They pervert the ways of God. When God says you shall possess, they say no. All you have to do is to borrow. When God says you shall be at the head, they say it's fine. Just be at the tail and beg. God says you shall rise. There is an element they call WIC. W-I-C. Am I right? You're laughing. There is an elimas that we call weak. And the principle of that is be broke so we give you milk. Am I right? It's a spirit. If you don't realize that, be broke and we'll give you bread and cereal. But yet, you could have bought for yourself chicken, meat, caviar. And that spirit makes you desire to remain broke. Is it Elimas? Because the words of God was for you to give. Not to beg. Now, that spirit give you what they call EBT card. No, I'm, I'm, I'm real. And that spirit put a drop of 800 proof. You're like, ah, hey, Jesus! Ha, ha, ha! And that spirit send you a letter. And they say, ah, we saw in your last paycheck that you did $2,000. But we cannot give you any more if you do more than $10,000 and $2,000. You go to your job. Can, can, you, can you take down my paycheck, please? <laughs> Hallelujah. We call it Elimas. And they have worked and they have cast spell over it. To the point that a child of God, I say a child of God born and saved and born again, filly, 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 filly with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> what does all want to get out of Elimas? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there are songs that says, kind of like, a, let the king arise by the child of God. Let the limas come again. <laughs> I, I cannot say it because that's a spirit, my brother. It's a spirit. Is a real spirit. Elimas cause you to go to the store. When you arrive, they say two dollar bread, three dollar bread, five dollar bread, seven dollar bread. And you look on all the bread. And then you like seven dollar Jesus. Ah! 
<laughs> and you put in your car ten dollar gas to drive to go to the dollar store to buy one dollar bread. <laughs> <laughs> Elimas, you spend eleven dollar and you eat bad bread. <laughs> Elimas, it's a spirit because that spirit makes you afraid to be broke because it's like, like that's all I have. If I finish it, what would I do? Hallelujah. Let me tell you how that spirit works. That spirit even comes in church. Elimas. Titan offering. Uh, take my check. Ten dollar. Elimas. Titan offering. Now, the guy in the month, he did $200. So the, the touch is how many? No, no. $200 that is 20 Okay. Elimas, on the $20 tight, Elimas said, right, tight the offering. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of the $20 is offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Elimas. God say, My path is to give seed to the sower. Listen carefully. It's to give seed to the sower. So that you will be able to seed. As I said, you will be able to sow bountifully. Elimas say, Ah. But if you sow between you and I, would you have again? God says, when you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And he must say, mm, do you really believe that? He said, God is love. He's a good father. So sparingly, and pray to reap bountifully. So Elima calls you two cents. And Elima tells you, you see, even the widow in the Bible, she gave one cent, so you can give two. <laughs> and then after, oh Lord Jesus, prosper me. No, Elimas. The Bible says to pervert the ways. I, 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 are you what I'm saying? Do you actually understand what I'm saying? When he talks about the ways of the Lord, is how God says to do so that you can be. He wants you to be at the head. That's the way of the Lord. He wants you to land. That's the ways of the Lord. He wants you to be and to become. That's the ways of the Lord. He wants you to live. That's the ways of the Lord. He wants you to not be afraid. That's the ways of the Lord. Are you following? But Elimas has very diverse type of causing you to accept the perversion, meaning the thwarting of the ways of God. But the worst is that you don't even see it as a sin. That's the worst. Because every time you do the contrary of the way of God, you do what? You sin. Are you following? But if you sin, it means you have to repent. But for you to repent, you have to realize you sin. But you cannot realize it because Eli must. Now I want to finish with this one.
We were given an opportunity. In that opportunity, they said, see, all other business people, the way they do is they, they like they use fake, uh, we, call it, we call it fake labeling, in order to attract more clients, more customers. And they say, all of them, that's the way they do, to increase and boost their sales. And they came to me. Now, on my face, it is not written profit. So they look at me as a normal person, a businessman. And I was speaking with them. And I told them, you see, I do not do business to become rich, but to honor God. And the person said, but if he's not to be rich, then we cannot do anything together. I said, surely. Because I'm not in business to be rich. I'm in business to honor God. And if I honor God, he says he will give me bountifully. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not in that so I have riches for myself. I'm in that so I can honor God and build his kingdom. But to do so, he will bring the riches. Does this make sense? So I become a collateral of the will of God and I become rich not by my will, but by his will. I remain in his perfect will. So, therefore, I will not use perverted ways to get to the riches. Because if I am in to become rich, then ways that are bizarre, I will use them. Does it make sense? But because I'm not in to become rich, but to honor God, then I will use ways that honor God so that when the blessing comes, the Bible says it is the blessings of the Lord that make it one rich and add no sorrows with it. And I told them, I don't do things like that. They said, well, all business people do that. That's how you attract customers. And I told them, even if I sell one thing and that customer is happy, for me, I have won something. Because I'd rather have my name in the mouth of the customer as a blessing than my name in the mouth of customer as a curse. And I told them, you see, if I do something proper and correct and good and I give to the customer, myself I'm happy, he's happy. He does not need to come to buy again the same thing. But at least he will know that what he has is quality. And that customer can come back for other products. Bring another customer. But if I cut corner, I do things that I know are not good and I give them. And it breaks. But yet I put a label on it to say it is the best. Then there is no need. The ways of God is for us to continue to remain true and truthful. True to the word and true to the promise. You are not called to be at the tail. Tell to somebody, I am not called to be at the tail. I am not called to be at the tail. But I am appointed to be at the head. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Father God, I pray. That your word, Lord God, will uh, saturate our hearts and your children. That your word, Lord God, will break every limitations that the earth has placed upon your children. Enlarge the visions. Enlarge the tent. Enlarge the rope. And let them, Father God, gather in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that uh, you will 
calls them to see beyond the limitation that the earth has placed upon them. That every spirit of Elimas that has come against them to pervert your ways in the life, let them be blinded in the name of Jesus Christ. I call your children out to succeed at every level in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.